In this lesson, we're going to take a look at thermodynamics. Now, thermodynamics is just simply uh, the movement of heat into or out of a system, and we're going to look at how that changes the state of the system. So it deals with the transfer of energy into or out of a system. By system, we mean a definite quantity of matter enclosed by boundaries or surfaces. Now, usually we're going to think of these as real things like cylinders or pistons that actually have a definite quantity of gas enclosed in them, but we don't have to. We could talk about a cubic meter of air in the middle of a room. And then we talk about the state of a system. We're talking about the pressure, volume, and temperature uh, and number of particles, although we generally consider that to be fixed. Um, we're not talking about the phases of matter. We're talking about the pressure, volume, and temperature and how those things change when we add or remove energy to the system. Uh, those are the state variables. Those are all related with the ideal gas law. It's an equation of state. It tells us how, how these three states, pressure, volume, and temperature, are related at any given point on a pressure versus volume curve, which is actually a convenient way of allowing us to map the different states of a system because it does show all three variables, two of them directly, pressure and volume directly, and temperature by uh, the relationship between them, the ideal gas law there. So here we have like that, this point right here represents one state of the system. Over here we have a different state of the system. Here we have another state of the system. What, how, we don't know how it moved from one state to another state to another state, but we know that it did. Uh, and the those points actually represent different states of the system, not different phases, different pressure, volume, and temperature states. Now, whatever change cause this we call a process. So a process changes a state of our quantity of gas. It changes the state of our system. So processes uh, change the state of the system and this can be done in several ways. We can add heat, we can do work, work can be done, we can change the volume, whatever. However we change the state of the system, those thermodynamic processes can be examined and allow us to figure out relationships between them. Now Processes, there's lots of them, but generally they can be reversible or irreversible. An irreversible process happens very quickly and we cannot retrace it. We don't know the state of the system at every point in between the two states. We just know, okay, if this is our pressure versus volume curve, we had it at this state and then later it's at this state. We have no idea how it moved from one place to another. Whereas a reversible process, um, happens very slowly and we could actually not only know how it moved from one place to another, we could recreate it and move backwards. So if we knew all the different points from one state to another state, conceivably we should be able to go backwards through those and get back to where we were before. Now irreversible doesn't mean we can't get back to where we were, we just won't necessarily follow the same path to get back to where we were. In reality, there's no such thing as a completely reversible process, but we can get fairly close if we do the process slowly so that it remains in equilibrium with its surroundings in terms of temperature throughout the process. Now finally, the first law of thermodynamics, you guys already know, it's just the law of conservation of energy, but we extend it to a thermodynamic system, which means instead of dealing with mechanical energy, we're also dealing with uh, heat and heat flowing into and out of the system as well as internal energy. So heat, internal energy, and work are the quantities involved in thermodynamic processes, and the law simply states that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. Now let's think about what that means. Okay, um, If heat is added to the system it's considered positive because if we had say a cylinder and I'm going to go ahead and put a little piston on here that's free to move up and down and in here there's a quantity of gas. So this is our system and if we add heat to this, so I light a fire underneath it, there's a couple different things that could happen. Uh, if this piston is fixed and it can't expand, then these particles heat up and the internal energy goes up, temperature goes up, pressure will also change. Um, if this piston can move and it slides up, then this system does work and expands and pushes that piston up. So that is actually a decrease in internal energy. So the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. We're going to take a look at a few different processes and how those change the internal energy of the system and how heat and work are related for some very specific instances.